Hello, welcome to Mediation. I am Stephen James Robert Bradford. You may call me Stephen. I will be meeting you all today. It would be great if we could go around the room and introduce ourselves, letting me know how you'd like to be addressed throughout the mediation process. We'll start here. My name is Max Manning. Max. My name is Jimmy Brady. You can call me Jim. Sounds good, folks. I just want to start off by thanking you all for coming to mediation and make sure none of you are on any time constrictions in order for us to move along the mediation process smoothly. Are both of you set for the next hour or so? Yeah, sure. Yeah, we should be okay. That sounds great. Fantastic. Uh, moving on. Did you guys get a chance to see they're coming out with a Fast and Furious 9 and 10 for 2019 and 2021? I didn't think they could stretch it out any further. You're kidding me. No. It was on the news. I don't really like those movies anyway. No, why not? I, I love them. You love them. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. all right. Well, we must be. It must feel more just like younger, the younger generation. Yeah, probably. Yeah. The younger. It's dangerous. Yeah, Paul Walker's. Paul Walker's about it. Yeah, they're driving cars fast. They're breaking windows. I mean, it's a good. It's a movie. Yeah, yeah. it's all fake. Okay. Well, no, Paul Walker. I mean, but it's it's a, it's a good series. I mean, Paul Walker being gone, yeah, I don't know if they can do anything with that for the next two movies, but I like I like Paul Walker. I like him too, and he was a good guy, but you know, he messed up in real life, and you know, now he's six feet under. I mean, um, it, was, it wasn't him, it was his friend. But, yeah, I mean, still, I mean, it's, you choose your friends wisely, you know? True, true. He tried to live like the movies. Yeah, anyway, I'm a big fan of these movies, and I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to go watch it. But I just wanted your guys' opinion on that. Right. Anyway, if you not already know, I'm a federally certified mediator, as well as named number one mediator in all of Illinois by Forbes Magazine in 2015. I hope with these credentials you can feel comfortable with me as your mediator. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah. All right. I'm glad you guys chose me. Um, are you all familiar with mediation? No. Not really. No? No? All right. Well, perfect. Let me just inform you. Uh, the purpose of mediation is to reach a mutually acceptable agreement. This agreement is not to be decided by me. Uh, I am a non-biased third party who will help guide you in the right direction of an, an agreement. Ultimately, the both of you will decide the agreement. As you can tell, the process starts off with me giving my opening statement. We will then move to the athlete, Max, um, giving his opening statement since he is the one bringing upon the dispute this evening. Uh, followed by Jim, the NCC representative uh, for the case, and he will give his opening statement. Following opening statements, we will work towards setting an agenda and begin negotiating potential settlements. If at any point during the process we reach a standstill, we will begin a caucus. Uh, for those of you who don't know, you probably don't know what a caucus is. Uh, this is where I meet with each of the parties individually to gather additional information for an equal period of time. Uh, I will send one of you out in the hallway, meet with you for five or so minutes, send you out, meet with you for five or so minutes if we happen to reach a standstill. Um, once we are done, we will come back as a whole and hopefully reach closure and understandings and agreements. In case you did not know, mediation is 100% confidential. What happens in mediation stays in mediation. You guys both signed my confidentiality agreement for prior to this, so you should already know of this. How does it sound to you guys so far? Pretty good. Sounds pretty good to me. All right, wonderful. Uh, time to go over some of the guidelines. Uh, there are three guidelines that I require for every mediation. Please be respectful of everyone in the room, meaning do not talk over one another. Uh, silence your phones for the duration of the mediation, and spit out your gum. Um, at this time, you can silence your phones. Do that. I think I need to silence mine. Good. Take your time. Good. Keep going. Jim? Yeah, it's good. All right. Uh, are there any other guidelines you would all like to set before we begin? Uh, probably okay. no interrupting. Joe? No interrupting. Sounds fair. Yep, that's fair. Uh, Sounds fair to me. Yep. <clears throat> all right. Uh, any point you need to be use the restrooms, out the door, to the left, through the double doors, about five feet down on your right. Um, are we ready to begin? Yep. Perfect. All right, Max, if uh, you would like to start off and give us your opening statement. All right. I'm Max Manning. I'm a junior here at North Central, and I'm a member of the men's lacrosse team. It's week two of winter term, and I'm getting prepared for the upcoming season in the spring. It's still far too cold out to practice, so the only option I have is to practice and train indoor in the resurrection facility. I've been using this facility for to better my lacrosse skills for the past three years, and I've never had any problems. However, an unfortunate event happened one day, and I was training with my friend in the facility, and I accidentally threw the ball and launched it way over his head, and ended up shattering one of the windows in Resurrect. Being a responsible and honest young man I am, I immediately notified the front desk staff member of the damages and continued on with my training. 
A week later, I noticed a bill that showed up as $1,000 on my student account to cover labor and replacement costs in the window. As a broke college student, I do not believe I should have to pay the bill for this for many reasons. I speculate North Central College should be aware of all the activities going on in Resurrect and should be held accountable for the risk involved with putting windows in a facility like that. Also, North Central makes far more money than I do, and $1,000 out, $1, out of their pocket is nothing to fix a window. And they have already they already paid for the maintenance staff, so the labor fee should not be involved anyway. The bottom line is I want to walk away from walk away from this with no charges on my student account for the window shattering incident. Thank you, Mr. All right, so what I'm hearing you say is, um, in this time of year, your only option for practicing is in the Resurrect facility. Correct. That's correct. Um, you, as you were practicing, you accidentally shattered one of the windows. Um, being responsible, you notified the staff immediately of what happened. Um, and then a week, week or so later, you noticed the bill with $1,000 on your student account. Um, you don't feel obligated to pay this bill, and you want to walk away from away from this with free of charges on your student account. Okay. All right, perfect. Uh, Moving on, Jim, if you'd like to give your opening statement, that'd be great. All right, so um, as you know, and as Max mentioned, um, our Resurrect facility um, houses many students, um, and also just about every single sport at our college goes there to practice. Um, kids also play there recreationally. Um, it's used for a lot of things. Um, of course, Max over here was practicing, um, shattered the window, now, unfortunately, this happened during a non-sanctioned um, team practice. So he was basically just using it recreationally. Um, they didn't have a set time. They weren't, um, I don't know, they weren't in there by themselves practicing. Um, there were other kids around. Um, so it's not like this is something that we can just throw um, onto the team bill. Um, let's see. So we feel that $1,000 is fair for the... Um, quality of the window and the amount of time um, taken to put it in the labor um, that he should pay. All right, so what I'm going to say is, uh, Resurrect is used for all kinds of different sports, all athletes, uh, recreational purposes, that kind of stuff. Um, and Max's incident here was a non-sanctioned team practice, and therefore you cannot the uh, fees charges cannot be taken out of the team's budget. Is that correct? Yes. Um, um, and the reason for the one thousand dollars is for the quality of the window and the labor. Uh, we feel like Max should pay that because of those reasons. Yeah. All right, so um, so thank you for your opening statements. Uh, moving on, we're going to set kind of an agenda on what we need to talk about, moderation agreement. So are there any talking points you feel as if we can, uh, you know, brainstorm for the rest of the evening? Uh, what do you think? What do you think maybe talk about the charges, where they're getting $1,000 from? Yeah, I feel like it's too high of a charge. Cost of labor. Oh. Agenda, yeah. Sorry about that. Agenda. Um, um, I guess I'm not the only one who practices in res. There's other people that res should take the they have the they take the risk involved, so I shouldn't be singled so, out. Liability. Yeah, guess, liability yeah. res. Yeah, it's they have they have that liability for me. They put windows in a facility like that. Yeah. All right, uh, Jim, anything else you think maybe we can talk about? Mm -hmm. I don't know. What else? Maybe we can go on uh, talk about the uh, you know maybe at the end talk about actual settlements options. Yeah, sure. Talk about that.
All right, so we got you know our agenda. We talk about the cost of the the window, cost of the uh, bill on these two account, where those come from, um, the liability of res, and we we'll basically review some options of these three. Is there one that we want to talk about first? Just one question. So the cost of the bill. Are you okay with that, Jim? Yeah, sure. All right. So. And then after that, uh, we'll go to the liability. Yeah, we're cool with that. All right. And then following that, obviously, go to options. So cost of bill. Uh, so you know, this is some question you had. Um, what would you like to address to Jim about that? Well, I was doing some research and I found that fixing a window or replacing a window costs between like two hundred eighty and like three hundred dollars, and then the maintenance fees, like hiring the maintenance workers, maybe cost another hundred fifty to one hundred. But I feel that it should be. The maintenance fee should not be included because you're already pay, you're already paying the maintenance workers anyways. It would there's I don't feel like there's no need to pay them any extra because they're already doing something that they've been hired to do. So I feel I'm just confused where you got the thousand from when I feel like it should be so much less. So um, so it's saying here you know maximum cost of a window be three hundred dollars. Maximum cost of maintenance is uh, hundred. So you're looking at a maximum cost of four hundred dollars total. Here. Is that what your research proves? Yeah. Uh, cost. Um, so yeah, if you want to kind of, Jim, maybe explain to him where you get these numbers from. All right, so the windows that we use in Res um, are the highest quality windows because they have to be. There's, you know, there's um, hundreds of athletes participating with different kinds of athletic balls that are being used. Um, you know, Res is soundproof. So the windows have to take part in that. Um, it's safe to say that these windows have been hit other times um, and not broken. So it really makes me question um, how hard the ball is being thrown. Um, but basically, we're using the highest quality windows and we're paying someone to come fix it. Um, it was completely unnecessary. Um, you know, we're a private school, we're not funded by the state. So we thought $1,000 is fair to pay for it. So, uh, Max, you came up with the two hundred eighty dollars to three hundred dollars. Was that the price of like a normal average window? I believe so. Yeah. So, um, Jim, if you could maybe, do you know how much it costs for your uh, high quality windows that are replaced in res? Uh, four to five hundred dollars. Four to five hundred dollars. Okay. So, we'll change this four to five hundred, and that that raises it to a maximum. Six hundred dollars. Is is that your maintenance? Is that the maintenance numbers right? I think the maintenance was a little low, a little depending low. on how many hours it takes. I mean, it could cost anywhere up to one fifty, two hundred dollars. All right, so one fifty to two hundred. So that brings a maximum of seven hundred dollars. Okay. So we 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 good on that. Okay. So uh, maybe maybe who else would like to know about the cost of the bill? Um. That kind of maybe where the rest of the three hundred dollars comes from. Yeah, maybe. it's not. I mean, I understand if I, my prices were a little low when I researched and realized how expensive they did cost, but it's also there's still three hundred dollars left that I don't know what came from. And you say we're not funded by the state, but we are paying forty five thousand dollars a year, and there's three thousand students here. I feel like thousand dollars, if you're here, seven hundred dollars in this case, but based off the research, isn't is like pocket change. I feel like that should be something that school should be able to pick up where I don't know, I shouldn't have to pay for it. And Jim, you're saying that the extra three hundred dollars that you have in the thousand dollar bill is just because you are in private school and you need to raise the extra money? I mean, yeah, it's just the um, the annoyance more of you know having to do it. Um if you send someone to do it, um normally, you know, they'd be um doing other work. So, you know, it's kinda like the um Opportunity cost of what they could have been doing instead of they're fixing that. Um, I don't know, we just feel like a thousand is a fair price. Okay. So, um, you see, Max, you see where the cost comes from and everything, mm -hmm. and he's explained to you where it comes from. Do you understand kind of the cost at this point? Yeah, I see. I'm All right. I'm not saying, yeah, but obviously, you know, you're, you said earlier you don't want to pay it, but, but now you know where it comes from. At least. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. All right, so uh, I guess we can, we can move on from cost of bill, right? Do we know? Talking about that. Perfect. So now we're moving on to the uh, liability of res. Um, so that's like kind of you know, put those in. You want to know, or you want to bring forward to the table that they should be liable for any damages to equipment being removed. Correct. Yeah. yeah. So 
got an elaborate one on that too, Jim. Sure. Is I'm not the only one. You said it was a non-sanctioned non-sanctioned practice, so I understand where you're coming from there. But there's also a farm. There's a lot of kids who do the same as me and go in and practice. And res, I think res should be liable because they take the risk of letting their students go in and practice and throw and kick balls against the wall and stuff like that. And it was just an accident. I didn't, it's not like I was purposely trying to break the window. So I feel like that should be taken into account. Maybe if they had like a budget early on, like that's set aside for that. I feel like they should be liable because they know the risk coming in. And putting windows in a place like that, they didn't really have to put in windows. So what you're saying here is that you know it was an accident, and that you know with all the activities, other sports, you know baseball, tennis, you know your sport, lacrosse, you know football, throw the ball around every now and then there. That you know they should know the kind of activity that would go on, and that, you know this kind of stuff is you know acceptable to have at any point in time, and that uh, it can happen. So what do you what do you think I have to say about that? So of course it's called the Res Rec Center, right? That's because students live there. So it's not possible to not have windows there, otherwise it'd be a prison. Um, the windows, you know, we house hundreds of students in that building, so the windows are a necessity. You cannot put um, windows where students live. Um, because of this, you know, we know of all the activities that are going on, but we must put in windows for the students' sake. Um, but they're, of course, the highest quality windows. Um, and also, a lot of times when where the windows are located, there's um, tables, you know, sitting by there where students can sit out there and do work. So, um, by breaking the window, it could have actually um, put a student at risk that was sitting there just trying to do their homework. Um, or, you know, if there's glass around there that the students that live on that floor didn't see, they could have stepped on. Um, I know you, you reported it as soon as you uh, did it, which we appreciate, we really do, but it, it caused a safety concern for the students that live there and that, um, you know, could have got bad if someone would have been injured from the glass. Um, You're also, you know, like I said earlier, the ball balls hit windows all the time that you, you don't break, um, which makes you question how hard the ball is being thrown, which also puts into question the safety of the other students in res. Um, I don't know if you were in there alone when it happened or if there are other, other kids running around, but um, I feel like if the ball is hard enough to break a window, it could have also hurt someone in res. Um, that was up using it for some other purpose than lacrosse. So with, with uh, you say, you know, you Threw it hard, you know. The most it's the windows are taking a lot of beating, and so you're saying because of how hard you're throwing it, you know, it was a little too hard. Maybe that could have done it. Is there a chance maybe that you know all the other times been hit, maybe Warren tore it, and like maybe he didn't would like 100 percent his fault, you know, from like prior hits and stuff like that, maybe. Yeah, it's possible. It's possible. Yeah. Yeah. So you got you got anything to say to that, Max? Maybe maybe like. <coughs> you say about that? What are you saying? I couldn't, I couldn't hear you. So, um, you know, saying that it was other kids have hit it before in the past, so maybe they you know, increased the damage, you know, and it just took one more extra little hit for it to break, and it just happened, it so happened to be you. I think it's very real possibility. Yeah, I think we agree on that. Maybe it is a possibility. Yeah, it's possible. So, um, with the whole liability of res, um, you feel as if res should be liable for everything. So, is there some some kind of like contract or anything that residents sign and athletes who go in there for recreation or for sports that say, you know, damage is done is on them? Is there anything like that? Um, so, there is something that athletes sign when they agree that they're going to work on res and they happen to break something. Um, depending on the situation, they are liable. Um, it's a lot of interpretation, but this one, you know, it wasn't a sanctioned practice, um, which tends to lead towards the college's um, side, is that they are responsible. Um, if they weren't doing it, you know, it, there was a coach there, there was nothing there on their own. So, so there's no supervision. There's no supervision. It was, you know, their fault. If it would, you know, if it would have been during a set practice time, um, you know, maybe we could have um, had a little more forgiveness there. But, you know, we respect that he's trying to get better at sport and uh, practicing, but... I don't know, 
got to be more careful when you're there um, alone and uh, you know take responsibility. Uh, Max, is this some something that you signed? Do you, do you recall signing? You know the contract saying that you know it was your fault. It's just not a non-session practice before working out. I didn't remember signing contracts, but I probably didn't read most of them. I, I took what college students do. Doesn't always read the full extent of the contract, but I do remember signing. Um, signing a contract on the first day of lacrosse. Is it, is this something they sign you know, once a year? Or is it every time they use the facility? Every once a year. Yeah. So so you're saying every student signs it because every every student, every student goes in there for recreation. It's yeah has the potential to go in there for recreation. Part of the paperwork when you move in. When you move in for dorm. Yeah. So housing is a housing contract yeah. that you're in there. Alright, perfect. So and have we had uh, incidents in the past with this with you know damages? Yeah. Um, last year a baseball player broke a window, and he did end up paying for it. Um, again, this was not during practice. Um, they were throwing the ball around. Uh, he was pitching, um, threw a wild pitch and shattered it. Um, he ended up paying the full price. Um, we feel this is a pretty similar situation. Um, you know, in terms of being not sanctioned, you know, the ball got loose and broke the window. And, you know, it's an unfortunate event, but it's something that you know you got to take responsibility for. So with that being said, um, you know, you it is kind of like some of the event. You obviously feel as if you don't feel obligated to pay for it. Um, you feel like you're responsible and that you know, without negligence, um, and you want to walk away free of charges. So um, you know, kind of you kind of understand the liability of red. We got that kind of covered. So we kind of move work towards reaching a settlement here. Kind of feels cool with that. All right. So um, so what we've seen here, we've seen the totals, uh, seven hundred dollars. The total cost plus you know the extra you know, just because he's in a private school, stuff like that. Um, however, you don't want to pay that. So um, is that something you know you've seen all the liability, you've seen the contract you signed, you got little additional information. You know they do use high, high tech windows. And is there anything you know, you'd like to you know, budge maybe on your offer? You know, saying that you, that you maybe just not just zero dollars, but maybe pay a little bit of it. Like what, what kind of things you got? Is that covered you? Oh yeah, I understand the whole liability thing. That I knew that I did sign that contract, but I believe that the seven hundred I should have to pay for the maybe not the seven hundred, but at least for the window because, like I said earlier, the maintenance guy and maintenance people do already work on res, so it's just doing another part of their job that they signed up for that they get paid for. So I'm fine. I mean, as much as I don't like it, I, like I said, I want to. I don't want to pay, but I'd be willing to agree more on the four hundred to five hundred. On how much, or depending on how much the window actually costs, and not necessarily for the worker, because the worker's already getting paid. So what we're saying is, um, the reason for you not wanting to pay the maintenance costs is because North Central already hires a maintenance staff who is working there, you know, five days a week, four hours a week, whatever, regardless of whether someone breaks a window. Yeah. Right. So you think you think you should only be liable for paying the. Um, the fee for purchasing the window having it here. Correct. All right. So that, that would be, you would be willing to pay $500? Yeah, if that's how much the window costs. All right, if that's how much the window costs. So. Did I say that, Jim? Yeah. Um, you know, I don't know, 500 you know, it doesn't seem like, I mean, it's half. Um, I don't really think, I don't know, I don't think that's high enough, personally. Um, as of right now, I'm kind of still sticking to the full 1,000. So you still you still see, I mean, is there a reason that you don't want to budge, that you just feel like $1,000 is what it is? Yeah, I just think, you know, it's what it's what it signed, it's what it is. Um, I don't see the need um, to try to bring it down, you know, if he's understanding that it's his responsibility. Um, I think or $1,000 is fair. So, as of right now, I'm not willing to lower it. All right, so then you, what you're saying is that, you know, rules are set for a reason. Uh, um, $1,000, it's not like this is the first time, you know, kids have paid it in the past. Yeah. No problem. So, um, so, so, so not willing. So at this point, we're still sitting at $1,000 max. Um, so it sounds like 
Is that five hundred dollars like maximum, or is that what you maximum offers? Yeah. I think my max is to pay for one day. Is there anything else you have to do you make and put on the table? Um, I mean, I don't know if this is. Do you guys want to do this? Can I help out? I want to help out with the labor. Help out with the labor, so I could kind of like. So you want to work off a little? Maybe still work. pay for the window. Work it off. Okay. And help out with the work on the maintenance a little. Not get paid for the maintenance, but yeah. help I, out. I don't know. Yeah, maybe is that a possibility, Jim? Um, I don't know if that's possible. I have to look into it. I don't, you know, um, just something like that. I don't know if you know you need to be have some sort of qualifications or certifications, or if it's just kind of you know anyone could do it. But I just want to look into that. Yeah, look into that. Um, I think maybe this time you know, kind of reach a breaking point. You know, you kind of you don't want to really budge. You got a little bit. Maybe we should take like caucus. I'll meet with him for a little bit. See if he's got any other things. Maybe he can want you know go with you. Does that sound good to both of you? Sure. Alex, maybe Alex, if I can walk the other side here. Jim. Sure. All right, Max. Um, so, what it sounds like to me is um, Jim and the North Central uh, organization. They're not kind of willing to budge at all. You know, they kind of they, they got the rules set. A thousand dollars is what it is, and it kind of kind of you know it stinks. But at the end of the day, you know, the rules are the rules. Um, there are maybe like you know options for you. Maybe uh, going through my head, um, you know, you did mention a great point about maybe you helping out with the labor of the window, and I think maybe you know we're in the right direction. Uh, we're taking the right steps, but maybe not help with the window. But there are a lot of other jobs offered around campus, um, so maybe. You know, maybe we'll see. Maybe Jim can get with the job to help you pay for that in the long run. Um, maybe work it off. Work it off. Instead of having to actually pay for it, maybe work it off. Maybe we see if that's something maybe he could budge on. Mm -hmm. Look at that. So, um, hmm, what, what is this? Let's see what we're starting. Make sure we get equal time here. Starting in here again. So yeah. 14. Okay, yeah. So this would be kind of like jobs that don't require much of a certification, you know, but you know, yeah. windows, replacing windows like a lot of certification. Maybe you don't have to do any work like, you know, cleaning around the whatever facility, um, you know, weight room, cleaning, other stuff. You know, just yeah. a little hours here and there yeah. uh, throughout the term, throughout the year, work off. You'd be okay with that? I would be willing to do that, yeah. And then, you know, that, shut, I mean, maybe, maybe we don't start with that, mm -hmm. um, offering that. Um, how do you feel like maybe your coach, maybe you talk to, have you talked to coach about this at all? I haven't got a chance to yet. Haven't had the chance to? Yeah. I mean, it could be a possibility, but he also sounded like, not my coach, Jim Morgan, sounded like he wasn't going to budge on letting the team pay for it because um, it wasn't essential patches. But yeah, I don't know if, I don't know if maybe it wasn't that he wouldn't let the team, I think maybe the original bill didn't go to the team because it was. So what think, about um, possibly doing like a team fund maybe? A team fund. Like we set up and then some of the money goes to to our program, but then some of it goes, I like tell the team before, and I say this is partially the first thousand is going to go to the window that I broke at practice. And possibly so, do that. So possibly, possibly a fundraiser? And so it would be, like, be like taking out of the account, the budget, but not actually taking out the Gotcha. Yeah, so you'd be earning the money. We'd be earning money, but spending the money. Yeah, spending the money, paying us back. I would be more willing to pay the thousand if none of those two options. Okay, so so so, you know, I'll talk to Jim and everything. But so for now, right now, you want to keep the you working it off kind of confidential. Uh, yeah, you can bring that out later if you have to. You have to. Yeah. Um, but you are. I'm willing to say you know, the two options of maybe coach. Letting you take it out of the team account. If that's not possible, then you could definitely do a fundraiser. That's that's an option. Mm -hmm. So a team fundraiser. Um, and let, let, let's say, so it's a team fundraiser, and you end up you know, make all the money you need to. Um, you do the fundraiser, and maybe work off the rest. 
That's why we have options. Yeah, yeah. Options and, uh, shout out to Generate Options, you know, make sure yeah. we get the best out of it. So, you know, we're going to try to see how this works. Um, hopefully, you know, you get to budget a little bit on this because you know, I do see where you're coming from. I do see that you know, you're unhappy. It was an accident. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I think, is there anything else we have on the table? Any other additional information you'd like to let me know? Um, no, I think that's pretty good. I mean, definitely get many more offers we can do. But I feel like those are, those work well. I feel like if I worked it off, it'd be the same as yeah. me working already and just giving mm -hmm. them money. So, yeah, no, I think these are definitely good options. So, yeah, um, I'll meet with Jim and we'll talk and then we'll come back in the hall. Sounds good? All right, sounds good. All right, come on back in, Jim. <coughs> All right, Jim, so, uh, so to me, it sounds like um, you're pretty strong, uh, you're pretty stand strong on your thousand dollars. You know, I, I understand where he's coming from. Um, I do, but in policy, yeah, um, I think there would be, you know, if we can get creative, there would be some ways that maybe we could reduce the price. Um, I'm not saying you're gonna pay nothing because that's almost out of the question, but yeah, so, so nothing's out of the question. Yeah. Um, when you say, you know, be creative, what, do you have, like, ideas, like, being um, creative? You know, I like the, you know, the idea where maybe you work it off a little bit, or, um, I don't know, I mean, um, we don't normally take it out of the team's budget, but I guess for this case, you know, um, we made a really good case for a side, um, we could look into that. You know, of course, then that would hurt his team, and his coach might be mad at him, and his teammates might be mad at him. But, um, you know, it's something that maybe we could look into. Yeah. So, so you're trying to just say, you know, he's not going to pay anything. That's you know, definitely. So you're saying the money is going to get paid. The thousand dollars going to get paid one way or another. Yeah. Is what you're I mean, saying. yeah. The winner broke, it needs to be fixed. Yeah. Uh, so someone, someone has to come up with the money. Yeah. yeah. That's the problem. So some way, as long as money is coming up with. Just, yeah. just and you know, you're gonna be looking at the team's budget, see what, maybe the possibility of taking it out of the team's budget. Yeah. Um, and also the possibility of him working it off. Yeah, if labor would be possible. Yeah. Um, is there any, any of this you know, might, might want to keep confidential? Or is this all um, stuff we can tell them now? No, this is fine. Yeah, so. Um, I'm thinking, you know, maybe another creative. Um, you get a little, a little name plate, name the window after him. Name the, name the window out of him? That'd be kind of, yeah, that'd be kind of cool. Yeah. I think that might get him, I don't know. He's paying for it, would that be something that you could do, or is that, you know? I mean, I think it's possible. I don't know, I have to talk to people. Like you're saying, you know, put, put like a nameplate over top of it? Yeah, or, you know, underneath, on the, somewhere, or, you know. Oh, that's, that's interesting. Uh, I like that, so I'll write that down, you know, maybe, maybe you'll like that. Yeah. So, name the broken window, but. Name, name the broken window, or the replaced window? No, the replaced one. Oh, okay. So recognition with the main plate of who yes. paid for the window. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, kind of like a booster that paid for. Yeah, like you know, like we got big donation. Made a daddy World Stadium. Yeah, yeah. Something like that, on a much smaller scale. Yeah, much um, much smaller scale. Yeah, they paid millions of dollars for that. And yeah, they, you know, I know, I know. You know, it's unfortunate he has to pay it, and I feel for him. So you yeah. know, anything that could really they get the more willing to pay or yeah, you know, it's more, hard. It's hard for the kid. He's going D three. He's not even getting paid to be an athlete. Not more variable, exactly. You know. Yeah. So. Window recognition. Oh. <clears throat> so yeah, is, it, is that about all you have for that? I think so, right now. Yeah. Right. So I mean, yeah, we. So that sounds good. You know, I'll see what he thinks of it. But you know, earlier we were talking about you know Fast and Furious. What, what kind of movies have you seen lately? Big fan of Dark Knight. Dark Knight. Yeah. yeah. Um, that, of course, that's not recent, but um, that's probably way there. One of my favorite movies. Um, Joker is probably my favorite movie character of all time. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, I made a, made a sly comment earlier about uh, 
you know, it'd be for newer people, but or you know, younger people. But um, I don't know. You know, I like Dark Knight. I'm just not a fan of Fast and Furious. Um, okay. Oh yeah. No. I've seen a couple of them. You know, and they just get kind of repetitive. Yeah. I don't know. Definitely. Um, I'm a big fan of that too. You know, Joker's Joker's funny guy. It's sad to see. You know, his his character. He led. You know, that's yeah. Uh, he led her and great guy. Paul Walker. You know, all these yeah, all these great, great actors being taken from us. But yeah, it's sad, but hey, they have to live on. New actors coming to the in the making. And, not exactly like that, but I mean, I have to say, yeah, that's a good movie. I mean, recent in movies, I haven't really been in the movies very much. I, I don't go to movie theater a lot, you know. Yeah, I think it's Howie Robert. I think the last movie I saw in theaters was The Martian. Okay, yeah. never saw it. Never saw that one. It's a um, really good movie. I feel like I've seen it in theaters. I don't know. I'm a big Netflix guy. Big Netflix guy. Yeah. yeah. Watch all Making a Murder. Making a Murder? That thing will cap, uh, captivate you, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Be knocked like, out about two nights, probably. Me being the mediator, you know, I, I hopped on that series right as soon as, as soon as I was able to watch it. Yeah. It's crazy stuff going on. I mean, you think he's innocent? You know, based on the evidence and what I saw, I mean, obviously I've seen stuff online saying they were left up out and stuff, but you know, from what I saw, you know, I, I think it made a difference. Yeah. I think it was a flip of a coin, I'm not sure. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. But, I mean, I mean, crazy stuff has to happen, you know, it sucks, you know. Family's weird. I mean, at first I'm like, yeah, that's good. That's good to know that. Yeah. But I mean, it is what it is. But anyway, yeah, we'll bring Max back in here and we'll discuss all this stuff. All right. Sounds good. Yeah. Come on, in, Max. You guys get a chance to use the restroom while you're out there? I do. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, no problem. So, um, yeah, we talked here a little bit, and, you know, we got a little bit of the same kind of talking points that we can go off of. Um, so, basically, paying nothing is out of the question. Uh, Jim, Jim said, you know, $1,000 has got to get paid in some way or another. Um, you know, you mentioned that possibility that, you know, it could come out of the team's budget. Um, he also said, you know, might be a possibility looking at the team budget. That's something you know we can agree upon. Uh, we've, uh, we've never done it before, but I think we could um, look, into, look into it. Yeah. yeah. So that's something that we can look into. Um, maybe not. We'll call this like a soft agreement for now. Uh, look into the team budget. Um, one other thing uh, that you know we kind of both agree upon is uh you know we can you know Max can work it off uh, kind of get some labor opportunities uh, like I said maybe not actually replacing the windows because that's like a high um, skilled job you gotta have a certain set of skills to replace the window but like small things um, like Max mentioned or we talked about you know cleaning up Renz Rec you yeah. know the gym you know cleaning the equipment stuff like that on a regular basis yeah that's exactly. something we could definitely do. It's one option. So you know, labor. Um, now we got two other kind of different talking points, two um, creative ideas to say the least. Um, Max had the idea of possibly you know getting together as a team, talking to the coach, doing a fundraiser to raise the money. Okay. Um, stuff like that, so it'd kind of be coming out of the team's budget, but they'd be earning it or something like that. He said his teammates would probably be willing to do that. Um, you know, depending on the fundraiser, he might not be able to raise the full thousand, <coughs> but whatever he doesn't make, he'll be able to work off later on. So that's that's also a possibility. Um, you know, yeah, I don't I don't want your teammates to hate you, um, but you maybe that's something they'd be willing to do, and you know your coach would be willing to set that up. Um, you know, as long as the money comes in. Be okay. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Maybe. So we'll put that in a fundraiser. And then uh, the last kind of thing that Jim and I had talked about, um, kind of creative is you know you pay for the window, you pay for all the stuff, and a thousand dollars gets paid. You're paying for it. Um. Why not recognize you? Um. So they maybe put a nameplate over the window. Saying, you know, you pay for it, stuff like that, you know, kind of like a, a, 
a booster type deal. You know, they name the stadium after Ben Jerry. Whatever they pay for it, they pay for Ben Jerry to doing that. Yeah, give you some more incentive. Yeah, that'd be kind of cool. And you know, and then let's let's say I'd even say, would you agree? Like, if the team funded it, did the fundraiser do it? Would you even just you know say, you know, twenty sixteen NCC baseball? Like, if it had to be the fundraiser, the fundraiser. Across. Oh yeah, the cross. Yeah, that's right. We were talking about baseball earlier. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, something like that could work. So, so I think you know we're gonna agree either way. We're gonna get a recognition plate. Yeah, sure. And sometimes that's a final agreement is a recognition plate for sure. Yeah. So for sure. Yeah, I like that. That's a good one. Or Max Man, just depending on what. Depending on if I do it or yeah. the other team does it. Yep. So. I think um, probably team would be more um, realistic. Realistic. I, I just, I, you know, I don't know. Um, I don't know. I mean, individual would be cool, but I think a team uh, would kind of cover. Uh, it wouldn't wouldn't be as out of there out there. I think it would just be team. I don't know if it's something you're in. I don't know if you really want just your name or, you know, 2016 NCC men's lacrosse. Um, I think that would give that would give you some more of a sign for your team to go back and be like, hey, we do this fundraiser, we're going to get our name, throw some res, and everything else. Yeah, I mean, I'm fine with you. Know, they, might more, they might be more willing. I, you know, I don't want them to hate you, um, of course. You guys are, you know, here playing lacrosse. Um, I want you guys to win, you know. Um, I don't want, uh, you know, this to cause conflict between your team. You know, I don't, if they all hate you, then, you know, that could uh, impact the playing on the field. So. I don't know. I think maybe the team that could be a uh, our final, you know, set in stone. I think. So I mean, I think at this point um, we can't really reach a final agreement because we don't really know the facts. Yeah. Um, so I think um, for Jim, maybe you need to talk to your people. Uh, they just need to make sure it's something that can't happen, and you are allowed to put it over to the team's budget if that's the thing. They are allowed to do a fundraiser. You are allowed to do the nameplate, and which you say you're pretty confident about that. So make sure that's something you need to go back and do that. And then for you, you know, you kind of. Kind of sign homework here. You go back, you know, talk to your team, talk to your coach. You know, check your schedule. Make sure you have time if you have to do the labor. Make sure it's in fit your schedule. So we can do that. Does that sound good to you? And then we'll meet. You know, maybe tomorrow or how, how long do you think a week? A week to discuss everything. A week seems fine because then I'm able to set up a meeting with my team and talk to my coach. Yeah. So we'll meet back here in a week. So same time next week. Same time next week. Oh, yeah. I have a question. Yeah. For the labor, would that be? I have to get it done. This term or throughout my time here at NCC? Um, what would you say, Jim? I'd say by the end of this school year. The school year? Okay. Uh, I mean, we're already, I mean, it is second week is winter term. Second week of winter term. Uh, we'll so be, we got 18 weeks. 18 to weeks, yeah. 18 weeks. So, yeah, figure out you know how many hours per week that would do the calculations there, how many hours per week that would require, and stuff like that. Okay. See if that's reasonable, and we'll look into it. Yeah. Does that sound good to both of you? That yeah. Sounds good. All right, so I'll take, I'll take you out. I'll see you all uh, next week. You guys have a good have a good week. Enjoy it. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Yeah, doors open. Come on in. Ah, Jim, how's it going? How are you doing, Steve? Yeah, go ahead and grab a seat. Uh, I'm just waiting on me. Should be here soon. Yeah, no worries. You're a few minutes early, so. Of course. Just kind of finalize some things real quick. Yeah, come on in. How's it going, Max? Nice okay. to have you. Grab a seat. Great. So, how was all your guys' week? Anything exciting going on? Just practicing in school. Practice in school? Yeah. Um, we're down to Bloomington. I want to start uh, boys taking out Illinois Wesleyan basketball. Oh, yeah. yeah. Kind of one OT. That was nice. Um, Bloomington, how far away is that? Probably eight. from here? Two hours. Yeah. But, I was seeing if you knew I'm actually from Bloomington. Oh, right. Yeah, it's about two hours. Um, so. It's a good win. Wesleyan was ranked. Right? Wesleyan was ranked. Um, we were number 12, they're number 8 at the time. So. Oh, wow. They went on the road. Yeah, okay, that was huge. Um, I heard the coach of soccer had a big game. Oh, yeah, he did. Yeah, he scored 34. 
Triple double, Sire? Uh, I don't know where you heard that. No. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe I heard that. No, I think like 34, 8 and 6. Yeah, me, it's a freshman? Yeah. Oh, cool. cool. <coughs> so, oh. you got any uh, spring season games? Or yeah. preseason? Not preseason. No, we don't have any preseason because we can't, in my, like, we can't predict the weather, so we can't get outside. Uh, that's true. It's too bouncy and red, so, so we can't have, like, indoor, indoor, indoor games. Indoor games so yeah, cool. so we just gotta mm-hmm. wait till it gets warm out. I'm not too familiar with the cross, just field, field about the same size as, like, a football field. It's a little small. You can play on a football field. Like, on football field. Yeah, it's like the width's fine, but you don't play, you don't quite play with the end zone. Yeah, so and you can go you like you can go behind the goal from the high. Be a little tight with fans and everything, have a game around us. Yeah. And then so when yeah, when is your first game? How's that how week like halfway like Wednesday of week one. Wednesday of week one of mm-hmm. spring time? Yeah. Oh nice, nice. Alright, so uh we had some homework for you guys during the week. Did we did we get that done? Yes, sir, we do. Yeah, just just a little bit uh to recap where we left off. So, you know, we did agree on there was going to be a win of recognition. Um, we just weren't positive of whether it could be individual, it had to be a team, um, stuff like that. Um, so, some of you know, what we had to, what we're kind of going to discuss today, hopefully you guys brought back what you're supposed to, um, you know, looking kind of at the team budget, see if, you know, the transfers, the fees were allowed to be transferred over to the team. You were supposed to check with your coach, see if he would allow you to transfer it over. Um, the labor um, for Max. We we're gonna see if you know he can take out instead of you know working instead of accounts being charged to his straight direct deposit to be charged to his student account subtracting from a thousand, and you're gonna check on on your time see if you could make that money make sure it's manageable before the end of the year. Um, then also the uh, fundraiser that we mentioned, um, you're gonna see if that was possible, and uh, you're gonna check with your team see if they'd be willing to do that for you. Is that correct? Correct. All right, so we'll start with you, Jim. Um, might give us. Your input, what you found out, um, what you came across. All right, so I uh, got a hold of President Hammond. All right, what did you guys talk about? Um, we talked about the name plate. Name so plate. he said that it is possible, but it will have to be the team name plate, um, not an individual, you know, that kind of, um, <clears throat> I don't know, the individual is kind of too, I don't know, it's a, it's a little bit um, excessive, we think. But the, t- the individual or the um, team one, um, you know, right guys in 2016, uh, men's cross team, um, is definitely possible. So we agreed to that. Okay, so he acknowledged the possibility. No, not individual, obviously. So. No. Um, so I also spoke with our AD um, about whether or not the team budget, um, you know, could be, you know, they take money out of the team budget towards this. Um, he said that it is a possibility, um, and that the fundraiser that we mentioned earlier could also be put directly towards this. And this is as long as the coach agreed and the teammates agreed. Yeah, I mean, of course, yeah, there, you know, it can't be. This isn't Max's call, but if he got, you know, the teammates, you know, they might have to. Maybe that means cutting back on food, gun, you know, away matches, or um, so eating little. cheaper, or but if they, if, you know, if they agree and if the coach agrees. The budget and or um, a fundraiser. Okay, so with the approval of the coach, a team budget it can be taken out of the team budget, and then with the approval of the team, um, yeah, as well as the coach, as well as the coach, a uh, fundraiser can be done. Fundraiser could be put towards this. Yes. All right. Um, was there like a, did you talk maybe like a certain time limit the fundraiser had to be done in time? Uh, um, we said done by spring term, uh, so start spring term. So done by start spring term. Um, yeah, so before spring break basically. Okay. Because before their season started. Before the season started, you know, it'd be a lot harder to find time. Um, yeah. Once our season gets rolling, uh, right now, you know, I'm sure, I don't know how many you guys have on your team, but um, it's probably hard to get everyone available at the same time. But it'd be probably near impossible once the season starts. So, you know, at, at this point, um, if they can get it done, you know, as soon as they can, uh, try to fit in some schedule, you know, maybe a Saturday afternoon, Sunday afternoon, something like that. Um, it'd probably be the best timing wise. All right. Uh, so that sounds good so far with that, with the uh, the budget and the fundraiser. Um, did you find anything about the labor for Max? Yeah. So this kind of goes with the uh, um, fundraiser. Um, <clears throat> if they do the fundraiser by you know, spring break, so when they come back in the spring, 
Um, I've talked with the fit. Do you actually live in Res? No, I do. You live in Res? Okay, so I've talked to a fitness center. Um, they're kind of low, low on staff. Um, and I could kind of reserve him a job there or a role there in the spring. Um, and also event staff, um, you know, for big events that the school hosts. Um, you know, the fitness center, it'd be nice for him because it's, it's low demanding work. Um, you know, it wouldn't put any stress on his body for, you know, in season. Um, and he can, he can also just walk right downstairs, um, or if he lives on the first floor, right over to the fitness center and uh, go to work for a couple hours, go back to his room. I don't think that would be too demanding of um, a proposal. Great. So, I mean, so you found two options. You know, you can choose one thing. It would be, you know, staff down at the fitness center. You can do event staff with sports and do a lot of Yeah, you know, or mix them both. But the yeah. event staff, I, from what I've heard, the event staff is kind of a first come, first serve. Um, you know, they send out an email. If you respond quick enough, you can work it. Yeah. Um, GPA, I mean, no problem for you, Max. Right? You can get good grades. Yeah, you're doing fine in school. All that stuff, stay so, out of trouble. But um, yeah, the fitness center for sure. Um, he can be on staff in the spring, um, and then yeah, the event staff. I put him on the list. Um, you know, if he's free that day, he can answer. You know, those are usually one day events, so that's not too much of a time commitment either. All right, great, great. So uh, yeah, you pulled your weight. You did your stuff. <coughs> work. Um, sounds good to me, Max. If you want to kind of let us know what you think of all this, uh, what you came up with uh, from your week long homework assignment. All right, I'll start with what I have to. I talked to my coach. He wasn't too worried about the Oprah open window, but I, so I talked to him about possibly taking out a team's budget, and he said that we can't just, he doesn't want to take it just out of the budget because, like Jim mentioned, we usually get food on our away games, and that'll cut back, we'll either have to not get as much food or get cheaper food, and Coach really is really big about getting like good food for us after our away games. But he did agree to the fundraiser, as long as the team agreed to do a fundraiser and the first part of the fundraiser, first thousand would go to the payment for the window. He agreed to that as long as I talk to the team. So I went and talked to the team and I mean they're all my bros, they're all my family. If they do anything for me, I do anything for them. And they agreed to do the fundraiser with me fundraiser with me. And it was kinda of helpful that the plaque was a possibility they, they may want to do it a little more. So the fundraiser was fine. The team was with it. Um, like Jim said, we can transfer the money. And then so on the lady part, I really did that too. Yep. And like like we all know, I will be in season spring term, so I wouldn't want to work a lot of hours. And so I found out that if I worked starting this week, if I, or even next week, if I started working for like ten hours a week, so like two days a week, I mean two days, two, two hours, hours so two hours per day for five days a week. Yeah. Oh. Okay. I would make fifteen hundred dollars at minimum wage. So that'd be plenty, plenty of covering. Now, if like we didn't get, say we did the fundraiser and didn't get all the money, I just had to work ten weeks during spring. I would make eight, about eight hundred fifty dollars. So with the same working hours, and I felt like it wasn't too taxing on my body. It wasn't too much on my time for homework and, and uh, sports. And I felt like I can do those hours. So, and I believe we can get at least one hundred fifty from the fundraiser. For the worst case scenario. All right. Yeah. So that's that's great. Um, yeah, you guys come up with a lot of good stuff. So let me just you know run, run over everything we got. Um, so the nameplate is approved. That's happening regardless. This is, uh, that's what's gonna happen. Uh, as long as the team sounds like the team's gonna be agreed to a fundraiser. Um, um, but with here, so you know the budget is okay according to the athletic director. However, it's not okay according to coach, so that's we can cross it off the list. That's not a possibility of taking a trip on budget. Correct. Correct. All right. The team budget no longer a possibility. Um, yeah, we're looking. This is my marker. Team budget. Looking okay, at budget. So we're good. Um, and then, so fundraiser with the team. Um, you, know, you said you mentioned Jim that you could do the fundraiser. For the team, as long as the coach approved and it was done by the start of spring term. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that gives them seven weeks to do a fundraiser to raise yeah, money. We feel like that's you know adequate time. Um, and yeah. however much money they make, if anything short of a thousand, they can work the rest off. Yeah, yeah. If they you know if they make um, the full thing and or the full thousand, um, he's not required to work. He can still have that job at the fitness center if he wants. Um, of course, then the money would be going to him and not towards this. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that can be a positive out of it. Um, you know, maybe got him a job too. So, All right, and then if he wants it. But. So, 
but then your team agreed to the fundraiser that they do it for you. Yeah. And you'll be the team, hopefully, to raise more than $1,000 for the rest of the team. Yeah. Right. And then you said, you know, obviously the nameplate encouraged it. Yeah. So that's one thing, you know, we can struggle here is, you know, the fundraiser is a possibility. That's a go. Um, and then in terms of the labor, you know, we talked about, you know, you can either work in a fitness center or as an event staff. Um, and you mentioned two hours a week, or two hours a day, five days a week. Um, if you started next week, it'd be roughly fifteen hundred dollars from now until the end of spring term. So it'd be too taxing on you. You'd be able to go to practice, get your homework done, all that in time with two hours a day per week. Um, but however, if you just started, you, know, you did the fundraiser. So that'd be if you did decide not to do the fundraiser. Yeah, if I just did it by just work it off. Yep, and then so that would take out the plat, the plate, and everything. You just work it off. Um, and then if you did do the fundraiser, you'd start it at the end of spring, uh, the beginning of spring term. You start working at the beginning of spring term, you make $850, and you just have to make a minimum of $150 for the fundraiser. Correct. Okay. So, um, so those are our, those are our talking points. Now we need to come kind of an agreement of what we want to decide to do. Um, so we have a few options here. Um, Max, you can either, you know, start working now, work until the end of spring term, make the money, it'll come out of your student account. And ultimately, you'll pay it off. There'll be no nameplate since you can't have it individualized and stuff like that. Or um, you're allowed to you know, do the fundraiser with your team. So you guys have now until beginning of spring term to plan a fundraiser, carry it out, make the money, do all that kind of stuff. And whatever you want, you have options. It's up to you to how you want to make the money. Um, and so, I mean, and then you know, whatever you don't make, you'll come back, you'll start working, and you'll pay the rest off yourself. And at the end of the day, you'll be able to put the team plate on, stuff like that. Uh, Jim, are these these options are? Yeah, they're um, reasonable. I think so I, I agree with them. Yeah. So it's up to basically, it's in your take, it's in your hands. You get to pick which ones you want. Is what we're down to. Yeah, I mean, so as long as we you know find as long as we're notified of what is going to happen. So between fundraiser and low labor, or all labor by you, this is what we got. And, Soon you probably want to do the fundraiser. I like to do the fundraiser and whatever money I need to make after that. Yeah. Yep. All right. So we can agree upon. You know, we got the window recognition with the team nameplate. Okay. Um, fundraiser with team done by end of winter. Term. Uh, fundraiser done, and then um, excess money due, whatever, any fees left over that you don't make from the fundraiser, work off. you'll work off. So, I mean, that's, that's the final agreement. We both agree we're all good with that. I think so, yeah. So if you guys you know, want to shake it, shake it out, you know, um, it seems like we have successful mediation. Things went well. You guys came calling. I appreciate you guys coming in, using my uh, my uh, expertise in the mediation field. If you have any other questions, comments, concerns, you can always contact me. You have my business card. Um, otherwise, it sounds like, you know, we're good. I'll probably be following up with you guys, you know, the next few months or so, you know, checking in, make sure everything's going good. Um, but other than that, um, you guys are good to go. I wish the best luck to you, Max, and making your money. Thank you, Jim, and all you do. Yeah, thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you. Good luck in the spring. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I'll walk you out. Thank you. Y'all have a good, good rest of your year. Thank you. Appreciate it.